have set up some some basic uh, uh, configuration for you. All the cameras and microphones are closed during the session. They are turned off by default. Uh, you have option to start doing chats in the in the chat in the conversation uh, environment. Uh, feel free to to make sure that you are uh, taking time to ask questions through the questions section in the uh, in the in the sidebar. Uh, all these questions would be answered at the end of. The, uh, the, the the presentation in a Q&A section where we will also raise a poll to get to your feedback. This session will be recorded and the recordings will be made available together with the presentations that we share you and also some of special offers uh, at the end of the session. So enjoy the show and here we get started. To start with, let me... Uh, quickly talk about the speakers. So here I'm Vikrant Dungre. I uh, am working with and I'm running the show at Lead Resource Consulting GmbH here in Basel, Switzerland. With me, I have Sergey uh, from Branch Track. He has a beautiful uh, tool that he will demonstrate at the, uh, at the time of the presentation. Robert Strobley is going to talk about Digital Samba. And not the least at the end, Miroslav is going to take us through the, the collaborator, LMS collaborator that you will get to know more about. Uh, at the beginning, let me just quickly have a quick check in here. There are lots of way of checking and this is one way we do it today. What would you like to learn or know today from this session? So please take time in the conversation box if you could write down what are the key expectations that you have from the session today. We will be monitoring these chats for you uh, throughout the session. Any comments, any feedback through the conversation, if you can, feel free to, 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 to write them up and then we get started uh, further. I, I hope everyone is able to enter their comments. In case if you are not able to enter the comments, please raise a hand uh, in the session. Let me take you through to the, the, the rest of the presentation now. Um, the agenda for today is going to be talking more about the conception of personalized management training. We call it more the blended way of uh, management of training through through webinars, through various learning methods, using uh, using uh, chats and and uh, conversations in the session. So we will go through that. Uh, we will talk about uh, how a dialogue simulator uh, can engage uh, the learners. Uh, later in the session, we will go through this beautiful tool of Digital Samba, where you are actually running this session today. You are part of Digital Samba environments today. Uh, and at the end, we will have a, a demo of the Learning Management System Collaborator where Miroslav will take you through a couple of uh, use cases that have been successful. So to start with the, the conception of personalized management training, let me uh, give you some insights to what industry is nowadays talking about. So here I have taken extract from Gartner's recent publication, which talks about HR technology, planning imperatives for 2023 and beyond. And although there have been lots of findings that came uh, through this survey, uh, two major findings that I would like to uh, show you here and this is basically all the companies are focused on, all the CEOs are focused on the revenue growth and profitability, and this is not gone anywhere. Uh, in order to support that revenue growth and profitability, one of the key areas that the CEOs and the, the, the leadership is looking at is how they can upskill uh, the, the organization, how they can upskill their people, managers, and the leaders through a uh, a robust skill management program or a learning management program. Already in, in, in the past, we have plenty of those in place. 
and now is the time that how we digitalize it. So there has been a lot of effort in that direction and the industry is slowly moving towards it. There is also a lot of talk about the talent marketplace, which are uh, becoming a, a go-to tool for all the employees to make career development, personal development in their career. Now, connecting that to what we call as uh, a blended learning platform. So in an HR uh, life cycle of an employee, or we can say the employee life cycle, so when the new hire or a new employee is recruited, the first piece that they go through is an onboarding process. And these onboarding process usually run from 30, 60 to 90 days. In some companies, it goes up to uh, six months. Uh, it has parts of mandatory documentation, orientation, training uh, in the first months to very role-based task-oriented activities. And at the end, it is more about the organizational integration, networking beyond. Uh, followed by this onboarding, there is a time that the employee start thinking about with their management what the objectives and priorities for the year are. And there is where we talk about performance, where performance could be defined into different ways across different organization. Here is one example that I've put through, which talks about 60, 30, 10 the, uh, organization goals versus uh, addition of team goals and also individual goals. And this could be done in different ways across different companies. And certainly at the, uh, at the base, it's always their uh, values and behaviors of the culture of the companies can also be part of the performance process. Followed by the performance process, which goes until the end of the year, throughout the year, employees try to find out what are the specifics that they need to learn more about to do their existing job better, but also to find out what are the areas that they want to grow in future to, to make a promotion in their, in their career or to, to transfer from one job to the other and so on. This kind of talent development process is managed by uh, uh, by uh, by a 70 20 10 rule which i have modeled here in terms of experiential training and coaching when i look at all of these different parts of hr life cycle or employee life cycle these all could be blended into one system which can be used and not in the form of islands where employee has to go through three or four different systems to achieve one objective so here is where we offer an opportunity for you to go through the, the collaborator platform that we have, which actually connects all of these learning interventions throughout onboarding, performance management, and talent development. Here's a, a conception slide that you see where we have tons of trainings that are around product compliance, soft skills, hard skills, uh, coaching and mentoring that can be blended with uh, uh, with the with the onboarding of the new employees so lots of training lots of activities happening at the onboarding stage and the performance stage and then whereas test where various tests and assessments could be performed in the system so that a personal development plan for the employees could be built at the end so this is basically more a platform which actually takes you through the entire journey of learning management in in an organization here is another conception slide which talks about okay how the, the performance management goals and objectives could be set in the system, how the uh, assessed goals could be estimated at the end of the year, and those estimations could be taken into calculation of bonus salaries and, and so on for the individual employee. And the outcome of these end of the year estimation could also lead into personal development plan, performance improvement plan in some cases. And all these personal development plans and improvement plans have sets of skills and competencies that needs to be achieved by the employee. Now, seldom employee goes out and finds such skills outside of the company environment. So within the company environment, you have the, the, the tool which could help you to take these steps. And here is where we have a few examples like branch track, which offers a very, very a uh, uh, good system of how the learning could happen on the go with more a conversation model. And also Digital Samba in terms of how the, the, the uh, larger training programs could be conducted in a very, very easy and, and sophisticated manner. Just to give you an example here about the, the, the kind of outputs, this is one uh, output that I have used in the past, so it was easy to show 
the how the goals and organization set up could be made in the the collaborator tool how these objectives could be set for each and every employees in the organization in the tool and then how the assessments could be done you could actually have these assessments uh, very well uh, uh, very well uh, i would say modeled here is one example where we have put this model in a form of a table and you could think about any other model or way that you could present that there are some outcomes in terms of reports that you could also pull from such interventions and make use of these into excel sheets uh, and and transfer that into the the goal set object the goal setting for next year but also into the year end assessment of the employees i will take a pause here and 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 conclude that uh, all these systems uh, that are available in the market at this moment would have different ways of functioning and and here we offer uh, collaborator as one of the tool which actually blends that and one of the way of blending that tool is to make sure that there is an improvised learning experience for every employee. And here is where I, I, I hand over the session to my colleague, uh, uh, Sergey, who is actually going to take us through what this blended learning experience could be like for a new employee. Sergey, over to you. Hello. and. Uh... Welcome to my part. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I hope you can hear me. If you can, um, type a plus in chat. If you have any questions, do that as well. So for the next 10 minutes, we'll talk about uh, what is dialogue simulation. I'll try not to make this into a technical demo. And uh, I'd rather chat about what simulations do to help personalize learning. Um, my question to you, and I will not run this as a poll, if you, have, if you see the chat window, just uh, um, tell me, have you heard about dialogue simulations or branching scenarios before, or is, is this concept entirely new to you? That, that would be very useful for me as we go forward. And while I search for my um, presentation. All right. Um, let me peek in chat. Okay, we have a plus from someone. Um, since I asked two questions, could mean that uh, I've uh, um, you've you've heard about it, or you can hear me. Anyhow, so um, uh, if if we imagine just a typical e-learning course, right? So um, how is that different from uh, a branching scenario? A typical learning course is like a one-way highway, right? The idea is to transfer knowledge from an um, expert to to the learner, right? So typically it contains something like um, some information, a page of text, and then there is a button next page, and then there is a little bit more information, and there is a button like next page, and so on and so on. It can go on for some time. And typically in the end, you will have a knowledge check, a quiz. I know if, if that's familiar to you, that is, I think, the structure behind like 90% of um, online learning that I've seen. So a lot of information being sort of transferred or dumped to the learners. And then we try and see if they have uh, remembered anything of, of it. Now, uh, with the branching scenarios, we try to flip this and try to put this knowledge into perspective, try to give learners an, a chance to apply that knowledge. And that is especially important in uh, the current era of uh, uh, totally online training where even like classic classroom things like role play in sales training or um, discussions in management training are being moved online and you need tools to support that. So scenarios um, at, at the very basic level, they um, offer you some setup and then they ask you a question, what would you do in that situation? And then based on your answer, they will provide you with multiple ways to continue that story. In turn, that story will bring in more questions, more choices, and you know even more storylines. And each of those different storylines will bring its own choices. So you can see how that becomes complex quite quickly, but the benefit of that is that you can actually simulate uh, complex processes. 
And even a sales conversation between a salesperson and uh, a client is a complex process with multiple pathways through that. Uh, even receiving a work email is in itself a scenario because you can do various things from ignoring it to postponing to doing something about it to forwarding it to someone to taking action and so on. We go through choices basically every couple of minutes in our work day. Hence, we need a tool to uh, train people to go through those choices, not just tell them what to do, but give them opportunity to practice. And that is not a new concept. I cannot claim you know, inventing it, not at all. Uh, but it's been around for years and years. The, let me show you a few examples of that. Uh, this is an example from uh, a retail training where um, uh, shopping assistants are being trained in a large retail store and it's built exactly as I've described before. You have a situation, you know, it's a challenging situation. You have a customer um, uh, who is walking around your store and she has a problem. Then you have choices. You can choose what to do. You can talk to her. You can ignore her. You can just say hi. And based on what you choose, as the shopping assistant, you will see whether you know that choice was correct or not, and what will happen next if if it does happen, right? So in in this case, we've disappointed um, the customer, and we have try again. But you know, if if we find the right way, we'll see how the story goes on. Um, can this can encompass a ton of different areas, right? This one is, is, is a famous example. It's called Connect with Haji Kamal. It's about uh, war fighters in a foreign territory where they have to connect with locals to establish report. Um, you, can, you, you can say that this is a sales simulation uh, uh, to the max or on steroids. And it's built in exactly the same way, right? Like all scenarios are built in exactly the same way. There is a situation you're approaching uh, a leader of this uh, uh, foreign country and you start a conversation with that person. Um, they invite you to have some tea and then you have to make a choice what to say, right? You can say that you don't want any tea and be rude. You can say that, yes, sure, and risk drinking something from a person that you don't really know in that situation. Or you can try and lie your way out of that. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's immediately entertaining. It's immediately useful. And it's a radically different approach from... Um, from what you would uh, uh, do if you were doing a typical e-learning course, right? So in, in a typical e-learning course, you would just explain what to do and what not to do, and you would ask questions. In this case, you let people play through this, you let them play uh, and, and fail, or you let them win, right? Um, there are multiple ways to get through this experience, and uh, that stimulates replaying right so once you failed or you have not achieved the perfect result you want to go back and try again or even if you win on the first attempt you want to go back and see what could go wrong right you want to play through bad scenarios as well which is super important for learning and it's all exciting it's all great but uh, my question to you is like does it does it seem like a big complex thing to build and you know you would you would be right um, in assuming that, right, these scenarios are, you know, it, it's a ton of content and it's not just page, page by page. You know, it's, it's merging paths, it's diverging paths, it's uh, uh, being able to loop back if you made a mistake, it's, it's being able to replay this whole thing. It's, it's, it's difficult. And um, when I built my first scenario, and my first scenario is right here, this is for an airline company um about 12 years ago if, if we believe this slide um so it was about uh airline salespeople approaching uh, heads of different corporations and trying to sell them the idea of flying with this particular airline and it was built in powerpoint right on the technical level that was super simple you know it's just images and text boxes and powerpoint you know standard clip art from microsoft and then there is a slide with buttons and depending on which button you click you go to slide 5 or to slide 12 and then on slide 12 you will see a little bit of that dialogue again you will click something and you will go to slide 27 and so on and so on there are a ton of different uh, layouts for this but you'll see the similarity right this is a layout um, uh, from uh, uh, 
tool called Smart Builder, right? Again, very similar, you know, people talking, you make choices and you jump to different parts of, uh, of your scenario based on what you choose. Um, this is something that's built in branch track, right? There is, uh, again, the same the person that you're talking to and, and choices. Um, this is something from a retail chain, I think, where you also have a purchasing basket where you can see what your learners are, or not learners, your virtual customers are buying from your learners and so on. So uh, the challenges uh, in uh, uh, doing that is that you have to, first of all, find out how to keep sense and keep track of all of that. And since it's a lot of content and you know it, it all links everywhere, that's difficult. And uh, we ended up just using Microsoft Excel at first, right, before we found any specialized tools. Um, the other challenge is that collaborating is hard, right? You, you, you've created this Excel file with all this content, all those arrows leading here and there, and then you have to email it to someone and then receive it back and then maybe receive it from multiple people. And you have to make changes in the actual PowerPoint based on that. And it's all prone to error. You will make mistakes in the end. And uh, uh, all of that makes the building process really, really long, right? Uh, at some points, it's so challenging in terms of you know time uh, spent on doing this that you will say, "Hey, scenarios sound great. You know, I've I've heard Sergey talk about them. The pictures look nice, but I will not do that simply because that's you know just too challenging, right? Don't have time for that. I'll build my typical um, typical e-learn and, and and go on, but." Um, and we've been there, right? So we've been there and that was the challenge that we had. Uh, we've wasted too much time doing that. So we ended up building our own tool. Uh, like I said, I will not be demoing this tool to you. I'll just explain what it does. So it works in your browser. You just go to branchtrack.com and you build this web of uh, uh, phrases, essentially, of whatever the people are saying, whatever your choices might be. Everything is very visual. It's a little bit like building a mind map or building a flow chart or just drawing uh, uh, on, on, on a whiteboard. So it's super easy to plan out the content. And then all you have to do is to just uh, um, add the character. You know, we have like a gallery of actors for you. Uh, put them into some sort of environment, you know, where is it happening? Is it in the office? Is it in, at the airport? Is this uh, uh, at the store? And so on. And there you go, right? This thing will be compatible automatically with anything, with any learning management systems, including Collaborator, of course. It will be compatible with uh, online presentation platforms like Digital Samba. Uh, hopefully, Robert will be able to demo this uh, to you uh, today. And um, yeah, the, uh, and also the final thing, it's free, right? So absolutely 100% of the functionality is available to you for free. Uh, the only limitation is that you can build one project, but that project can be the best that you can imagine. And uh, we'll be happy to onboard you if you go to brainstrike.com, uh, connect with us, we'll, um, we'll be able to uh, set you up train you and you'll be building very cool scenarios in no time thereby elevating your um, e-learning from you know one way highway of, of just dumping information onto learners into something that includes practical and realistic um, opportunity to to experience the real job challenges which I think is super super important now as as we move more and more into this entirely virtual environments. So yeah, that's that's it from my side. And uh, I think it's uh, Robert's floor now. Um, thank you for your attention. If, if, uh, if you're checking out BrainStrack while we're doing this, uh, feel free to ask questions uh, on the fly and uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye out and try to answer them. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Awesome, thanks a lot, Sergey. Thanks for the handover. Um, I'll just pull up my slide deck over here. So uh, while I load that, I have one primary mission is to, I really want to, want to get you guys to interact. So maybe you can tell me where you're from um, or where you're connecting from today. You've got your speakers joining from all over Europe. Um, I'm connecting from, from Vienna um, in Austria today. Um, I am your friendly uh, third host of the day. I'm, my name is Robert Strobel. I'm CEO of Digital Samba. And I'm, trying, I'm here to try and show you how to keep your 
e-learning engaging. Um, it's uh, you know it's challenging um, in this in this day and age to keep your your learners um, awake and make sure they interact with your with you and and your content because in the end of the day, us trainers that's what we're here to do. We want to make sure that our learning is a success and we try to uh, we need to create a memorable memorable experience for for our learners. Um, so yes, yeah, so I see we've got a lot from the Ukraine. From Ukraine, that that's wonderful. Um, we've got Werner from India. We've got Vikrant from Switzerland. I, as I said, I'm from uh, from Vienna. Sergey is uh, joining us from Latvia, USA. Welcome, hi, right, Kate. Um, so, Digital Sam has actually been around for 20 years. Uh, we've been we've been in the video conferencing space for a very long time, and we've worked. We've had the the privilege of working with a ton of of really um, special customers. Um, especially in the last two years. So um, I was maybe not surprised, but at the same time amazed to read that um, about one third of knowledge of, of a worker of knowledge workers time is uh, at work is spent in video calls and video meetings. I guess it's not entirely surprising because you know we all had meetings um, throughout most of our work lives anyhow. but since the video call has been around it's now you know since these last two years people have really understood, what the power of video calls are. Um, and I think that's remarkable. It's something to think about a little bit. And we now find ourselves as trainers, uh, you know, in a, in a point of time where we have to think about how we can continue to get our learners' attention and cut through the noise. Yeah? When they go from video call to video call, we need to make sure that the one that we're running um, is a special one. And so, you know, after about a couple of years of, of employees using these type of training tools, what do they think of it? Do they consider them valuable? And um, it's interesting, again, to see that webinars are still considered the number one most effective form of learning. 88% um, of employees would stay with a company that offers proper training and skill development opportunities. 93% 93 of people said that they would feel more satisfied at work with more training. So, again, you know, um, the more training we can give, to our staff members, the better in the end of the day. And we have to think about how can we get them into these um, uh, situations more easily. Um, I'd like to talk real quick about the difference between what a marketing and an e-learning webinar is. So this one is more of a marketing. While we're trying to make it educational, it is in the end of the day more of a marketing webinar. You guys are a crowd that we are not part of our intricate group um, within the company that we're usually working with. It's not part of a structured course, and it's very much a one-to-many experience where engagement, while we're trying to make it happen, is limited to, to feedback such as chat, and eventually we'll show you some polls as well. We'll post them up on the screen, um, versus e-learning, which is a much more instructor-led, um, structured, um, course-based, experience and where we as technology providers try to um, provide as many tools for you to make this experience engaging. Um, good. With um, at this point, um, it's again, you know, this also really underlines this um, studies show that interactivity holds attention so much better than non-interactivity. This is true all across the internet. And so from us as technical providers, we consider it our mission in order to make, you know, give you the interactive tools for you to be able to create better courses for your learners. So what do we advise? How do we engage audiences? So there's obviously you as a presenter, you as a teacher, you have to try and be engaging, try to ask questions, use engaging video visuals, prepare handouts to make sure that, you know, people take something away from the lesson, constantly encourage interactions and use the interactive tools that um, the solutions that you're choosing um, are make make available to you. And as opposed to Sergey, I will use this to have a, you know, to run a little bit of a tech demo and show you guys some of the features that we have available within the digital Samba tool. But, you know, this could be applied to any tool that you might, you know, the tool of your choice. And in the end, you should choose the one that you're most comfortable with. Um, make sure that you have, uh, you know, you feel comfortable with it and that, that you've practiced uh, uh, working with it. The most obvious one is screen sharing. I think we all know it. Um, it's I don't need to go into all that much detail here. Um, the next one is a whiteboard uh, where you can again show some interactivity. Um, I'm going to ask 
uh, some of my co-presenters to help me demonstrate this over here. So I'll start with the first question myself. Um, I'll answer this one over here. So it's almost dinner time. Maybe some of you are actually eating pizza while we are having this session today. Um, Anna, if you could answer this next question down here. And we'll see how she's doing. Very good. So, you know, this demonstrates very well how easy it is to create something that's a little bit more interactive, a little, little bit more engaging, makes us feel like we're sitting in the same room and can actually, you know, with you as a, as a trainer, um, you can bring in the um, you can bring in the uh, the content that you like and um, and pull it up on the screen and then make sure you can create you know you can get very creative in the kind of exercises that you create. Yes, and I think you know tomorrow is the operative word here. We don't finish our homework today. We leave that till tomorrow. Um, great. So um, another one that we have is polls. Uh, we haven't done one yet, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull one up right now. Um, I'd like to know from from the crowd um, how many of you already use uh, virtual classrooms in your in your day to day. Um, I'm just going to pause here for a second to try and uh, understand what our audience knows or does not know about virtual classrooms. And thanks, I can see the the polls are coming in. It's uh, very close at the moment. Um, I can see the results over here. So we've got about uh, sixty percent. 60, 40 percent approximately split. Um, so there's still a lot of people who are not knowledgeable about virtual classrooms, but yes, okay, the more people answer, we're now on a 70, 70, um, 30 split. So I'll just show the results now as the poll is closing. So we're at a 66.33 percent split. Great. So thanks for participating here. Um, I appreciate it. Let me get back to my slide deck. Good. So that's polling. Um, I think you all got it. Um, another nice one is uh, live Q&A or Q&A. Um, Q&A tools can be very powerful. So while the chat is an open tool that anybody can chat into, you can also with Q&A keep a little bit more control over how your um, participants um, ask questions. So I can see a question came in from Anna. Um, maybe you guys can try that as well. And what I really like about um, this tool is I can actually bring this up on the screen. So, hey, we've got a question from the crowd and I was asking how I am today. Well, it's how how much better could I be than being part of a, of a webinar, right? Uh, so thanks for that question, Anna. Um, great, another one is the, um, a really nice one that's kind of become more popular with webinars throughout the last couple of years is the, um, are the emoji reactions. So if you like, you know, try that one out for yourself. Again, a very easy way for the audience to get interactive, you can gauge interest. You can just check if, if people are still there. Of course, you want to keep statistics and all of this and see who's participated. So in the polls and your Q&A and so on, you can export all of that and make sure you take that with you afterwards. Upload it, it, upload it to your learning management system, such as uh, LMS Collaborator, and make sure that you're capturing all of that, that goodness that you're getting back from your learners and make sure you create the reports um, that you need in order to be able to report to your, to your managers. Um, Another really good one, um, you know, if you want to create engaging content is you need to be able to work with a tool that allows you to store content, um, multimedia content preferably. In this case, we're using simple PDF uh, presentations, but if your tool allows it, you can also bring up videos. So I'm just going to show a really quick one of, of this amazing learning management system, like a next gen uh, LMS uh, called Collaborator. Um, we are super proud to be integrated with this tool. And I think it's, uh, you know, just being able to bring video into a session makes the, makes the experience just that much more, more engaging. And watch all of this unfortunately anyway we have Miroslav himself teaching us a bit more about collaborator in just a sec so we'll go back to to the presentation um breakout rooms also something i guess you know if i'm not going to go into all that much detail i suppose the ones of you who are working with uh with video conferencing um or in virtual classrooms know about breakout rooms but they came incredibly um, popular throughout the pandemic um, it allows you as a teacher to split your, your group, your group of learners into individual rooms, have them work on exercises over there and then bring them back into the main session. Again, something that's 
you know, trainers have been using in the real, real world for many, many years and are now able to emulate in um, online environments. Also, as tech providers, you know, the, <laughs> to be able to cater to the e-learning crowd is probably the most, the most challenging of them all. And I'm, I'm quite excited about what we as a provider have been able to do over the last few years. Um, I saw some of you have already been raising your hand. Um, this is, you know, again, more of a one directional webinar. So we haven't been able to give you guys access to the floor yet. Maybe we can do it towards the end of the session if you want to ask questions in voice. But again, you know, a very easy way to get your, um, your learners to participate in the session for a little while, but then bring them back down into the audience as you need. So really like, you know, a very powerful roles and permission system is important when you, when you choose your virtual classroom environment. Okay, um, those are the main features. Um, I also wanted to talk about one that I find particularly exciting. Um, there's something called web apps. So we're able to um, load applications directly into um, the webinar itself. A very popular one is Google Docs um, and also um, Microsoft's uh, Word um, in order to be able to collaborate on on documents, but we've prepared a little demo for you where we bring branch track directly into the digital summer environment. I'm going to bring that up uh, on your screen right now. And again, for most of you, I feel like, you know, this is just going to feel very intuitive. Um, you don't need to move from one environment into another. You can just directly participate in this interactive simulation um, in the bottom right. If my video is covering your um, the options uh, just move it, but you can actually interact and try to, you know, run this training that Branch Track offers in a completely seamless way um, directly here within within the webinar. And again, this is this is fantastic because you can pass the data of the results of these um, of this of this simulation straight back into your LMS. Um, and this is really where the power of working with modern tools um, in this in you know in in twenty twenty three gives you as trainers capabilities that you may not, not have had before. And you know, I, I, I'm very excited to see where everything is going. So one of our customers that has been with us through, through such a long journey is, is D-Link. Um, maybe a lot of you probably use their products. Um, they do a lot of routers and, and tech products, uh, internet related products. We've been working with them for 12 years. They've been running sales trainings with Digital Samba. For, for a very long time. If you guys would like to join us on this journey, we actually have a promo code for you. Um, we'll, of course, send this to you after the session. Um, we'd be more than, more than happy to welcome you as a customer. If you have any questions, please submit them in the Q&A module. And at this point, I have the honor and pleasure to hand over to Miroslav, who will tell us a lot more about LMS Collaborator. So thank you so much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Robert, for introduction. I um, select our presentation. One moment. And start from this. Uh, good evening. My name is Miroslav Vatsula. I am CEO of LMS Collaborator. Thank you for taking the time for meeting with us. We all are talking about digitalization HR work here about cases and methods of transformation in this sphere. Vikram Dungre presented the concept of training the company's personnel with a focus on achieving business goals and the individual development of each employee. In modern requirements, uh, the implementation of this concept requires a creative approach, and we have access to all the necessary technologies for this. Digitalization of the learning processes allows along with face-to-face -face training to use digital Samba web conferences presented by Robert, branch track dialogue simulators by Sergey. Mm, which our product you can implement this concept and join all technologies in one system. Our company develops elements collaborator a platform for corporate learning. Uh, we have over 100 implementations in various companies and have uh, helped create many training pro projects and systems. And we embody our practical experience as tools of the LMS Collaborator. I will talk about the principle of implementing blended learning 
for the onboarding processes, as example. Mm, for example, you hire new sales managers. In the first week, they must know about the company, the primary work rules, the managers and colleagues, etc. Then there will be a series of courses on service standards, company products, and sales methods. And then full-time work begins, and the manager will set goals for the year and approve a personal development plan. In this process, we implemented the base theoretical part of these learning courses. Necessary meetings and face-to-face -face training will be held as web conferences. The entire process of sequential assignment of tasks and activities will be automated through learning trajectories. We will make separate trajectories for each stage of onboarding training. If a person completes the trajectory of the first week, week one, he will automatically begin the trajectory of the next stage, month one. The task of the portal administrator um, fill the LMS with necessary content, prepare a learning task for trajectory steps, check the operation of the trajectory on yourself and fix the found mistakes, assign users to journey along the trajectory, that's all. Upon completing the training in the LMS, create a report for company management. The first week stage uh, looks like, for example, th as this. Uh, each new employer begins by receiving a checklist in which he must check the completed action uh, necessary for work registration and access to the workplace. Viewing welcome course, several courses of the company's basic rules for employees are also held in sequence here, including face-to-face -face training at the workplace. When all steps uh, will be completed successfully, access to a meeting with the manager will be provided. In this meeting, all job issues and next learning actions will be discussed between the manager and the employee. As the first month stage can be realized like this. The, our employer will be assigned to the next training course. After meeting with his manager, uh, he begins to study things that are directly related to his job, company rules, products, sales methods, etc. There can be different types of activities here, face-to-face -face and remote training with the trainer and self-study tasks. How exactly can it be implemented? It's a company's decision. This trajectory is finished by um, a meeting with the manager, where the training results and the work quality in the first months are discussed. Goals for the future are formed together with the manager, and after this meeting, the manager fills out an employee's evaluation checklist for each new employee. The portal administrator receives a report from the LMS after completing the onboarding training. And this report allows companies new employees according to their supervisor evaluation. Um, the information will be passed on to management. Learning processes can be automated if they are intended for group learning. But the individual component is important for managers' training. Our platform allows for both processes, group automated training and individual development plans. User and their supervisor can create such learning plans. These plans will take into account not only tasks from the supervisor, but also tasks performed by the user in group training, if necessary. LMS Collaborator has rich functionality and opportunities for implementing educational processes, including blended uh, learning and the personal approach. It can integrate with other technical tools like Digital Samba or Branch Track to solve the client's problems. Our clients uh, have programmatic access to system data and functions. 
And so they integrate LMS into their company's IT ecosystems. Our experience is 10 years of various solutions for constructing and launching different learning processes for different companies. And we can share this experience with your project too. Uh, we have, we invite you to try our system in action. Uh, try to digitalize your corporate learning process with us. Our consultants will accompany you and help you step by step. Uh, we also provide a free test drive of the system for one month. Uh, I invite you to collaborate and check how our platform can fit your learning processes. And thank you for your attention. Uh, and I pass the word to Vikrant. Please. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Miroslav, and really appreciate uh, the whole presentation. So um, I would like to now take this opportunity to thank everyone uh, to 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 uh, to attend the session, asking questions. Uh, we have our Q and A dialogue also open for you to keep asking questions. We'll take that. Uh, here's a slide. Try and uh, I would say our services. So you see the contact email addresses of all uh, the people that are demos that you can request uh, directly by clicking the link. So feel free to, to reach out and interact. Here is where we have a quick uh, poll for the webinar. So please, if you could take time and submit your, uh, your, your feedback on how this whole webinar was for you. Uh, it, was, it would be a, a great uh, pleasure to have your feedback coming. Uh, now the time to look at the questions. Um, and I saw that there was one question which was uh, probably answered during the, the session as well. Uh, please feel free to, to raise any further questions that you may have. Um, and we would be happy to, to offer you more insights and answer your questions there. May I also request all the presenters to, to maybe open up their video and audio to make the final greeting to everyone before we conclude this session. Yeah, thanks for thanks for those remarks, uh, Vikrant. Uh, it was a real pleasure sharing the stage with you today, Sergey. I saw your comments in the in the chat about being skeptical skeptical about the video part. Um, I can tell you I felt the same. I remember when we started the business about 20 years ago, everybody told us that nobody's ever going to use video. It was just a common um, conception that people thought, I have a phone. Why would I ever use video? But of course, at that time, there was no iPhone. There was no broadband. There was people simply that did not have or the video calls that they knew were, were completely out of their reach because you had to go to a big video conferencing room or what they saw on the Internet at the time was purely... You know, if you remember those early video phone calls, you had like a very, very slow, very low resolution image. So nobody could have believed that we're able to connect the whole world in a in a in a web browser as we, as we do here. And I think you know that's also what I'm so excited about is how these all these new next generation tools, like the ones that we have in this session today, are going to start um, melding with one another and creating creating experiences. I'm really like i think we're going to see a new wave of next generation applications coming very soon that have video in, in their, as their center part because in the end it's about humans connecting you know and, and working with one another absolutely absolutely great so thank you very much uh, uh robert any last words miroslav from you sergey well yes maybe I'll make some words um it's the first time where we make a meeting together but uh, your concept, uh, Digital Samba and Branch Track, we collaborate it in one system with our LMS. And it's not the first meeting with each technology together. So it's a great, uh, great meeting. And I hope that we will have uh, new, new projects uh, and can talk about these projects for all. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And finally, I would like to thank all the audiences. Uh, thank for being uh, a great sport. 
And uh, I look forward to interact with you in another forum. Feel free to reach out to any one of us. You will receive the presentation. You will receive the recording. You will also receive some goodies in terms of testing the system, getting the demo. So feel free to, uh, to connect with us. And thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.